Hello students, today we're going to talk about functions, tables, and graphs in your algebra class. So, for a quick warm-up, let's try to solve problems 1, 2, and 3 to determine whether or not they're a function. This would be a really good time for you to pause this screencast and check your answers. Hopefully you've paused, your, hopefully you've paused this screencast and we're going to try to prove whether or not these things are functions or not. So I've drawn this vertical line because with any graph, we can test to see if it's a function or not using the vertical line test. So I drew a vertical line, and as we go through problem one, we're trying to see if it passes the vertical line test or fails. Remember, if it passes, it should only touch the graph in one location at one time. So in this instance, it's touching once, but as soon as I move over, it's touching the triangle or the graph twice here up top and down here at the bottom. So this one is not a function. Question number two, we're going to use the same thing and as we go through it is a function here, it's also a function here, but as soon as we bring our vertical line over to this portion, notice how it's touching all along this line segment right here. Therefore, this one is also not a function. Last but most certainly not least is question number three. It doesn't have a graph, so we're going to have to play match. Remember, we're going to look at our x's, and the best way to do this is to look at our x's. If we have any doubles of our x's, we're going to look at those. If they're paired with the same y, then it's a function. If not, it's not a function. So we're going to look already at our x values. Notice we don't have any w's for y, for x, I'm sorry. So chances are this is going to be a function. 1 is paired with 7, 2 is paired with 10, 3 is paired with 13. And because there are no doubles of x, and each one goes to the, its own individual y, we say that this one is a function. So now, at the end of this lesson, you should be able to determine or find a range given any domain. In addition, you should be able to create a graph, uh, a table, and graph each function. So there's three definitions we need to discuss. First of all, we have something called function notation, which is denoted by this f of x. Now, we read it as f of x, or this function as it is related to x. And we'll talk about this a little bit more now, or later. But essentially what happens is that because we're going to soon see multiple graphs for y, we don't want to have to call each one y because when we graph it or when we want to refer to it, we can't say, oh, that y over there. So we, we use instead is function notation to say the first graph, or for example, is f of x, the other graph is g of x. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is an independent variable. Independent is a word that you should already be familiar with. Independent is someone who is on their own or someone who can take care of themselves. And as a result of being able to take care of yourself, you have the option to choose, which is why it's called independent. You have more options and you have more choices. Dependent variable is what your parents can say you guys are because you're dependent on them. So because that's the case, you probably have less options. For example, someone who's independent can decide what they would like to eat for dinner and just go. Someone who is dependent would have to see whether or not their parents are willing to take them or whether or not the group agrees to the same th thing for dinner. So what we're going to do here is we're going to graph and find the domain. In order for us to graph, what we're going to do is have to create a table or an xy table. Sometimes it's called an x or input output table, but for algebra, we're going to begin by calling this an x and y table. Now, the thing to consider, the thing to keep in mind when we're doing these graphs is that it's really important that you figure out or that you choose numbers that are both on the positive side and the negative side on the number line. So, we're going to pick negative 1, 0, and 1. So when we 
choose these x values, which in this case our x's are independent because we get to choose what the numbers are, then we have to substitute these values in and determine what y is equal to. For example, when x is equal to negative 1, then we could say y equals negative 1 plus 7, which is equal to 6. So we can take that and replace 6 here. And when x is equal to 0, we can substitute that value in. y equals 0 plus 7. So that would be 7 here. And doing the same method, this would turn out to be 8. When we graph this, however, we're going to need to do a we're going to need to graph this or plot these points. So what we're going to do is we're going to go online and find our handy dandy graphing free online graphing calculator. And we are going to graph this function. So that was x plus 7 and we get the following line. Now the next question that we were asked is to determine what the domain is. Now the domain, like we talked about in an earlier set lesson, determines all the values that x can be. Now looking at this graph, notice our x values are all the values going to the left and right, not up or down, just left and right. So what we're trying to determine is how far left does this graph go? So as we trail or trace the graph to the left, notice that's going to continue to go on forever. If we go to the right, notice that this graph is going to continue to go on to the right forever. So what we do, what we can say is that the domain is all real numbers. So that's our domain. We're going to do the same thing with